Okay, there are two basic uh, solar systems that most people use. There's a closed loop system and a drain back solar system. They're both very similar, but they both have advantages and disadvantages. So we'll try and go through some of that in the video here. Not all types of collectors can be used with both types of system. You basically need a collector that will allow all the fluid to drain out of it when the pump turns off. Some designs of collectors, both tube collectors and flat plate collectors, don't do this. So you need to check uh, with whoever you buy the system from whether it's going to work. The LA250 on solar collectors uh, will work with either a drain down or a closed loop system. This video is also going to assume that you've watched our previous video we did on the closed loop systems and how the solar block works. So before you watch this video, you should really click here and watch the previous video. In the previous video where we described the closed loop system, the pump station we use is this HBX solar block here. Um, this can only be used with a closed loop system. Uh, the manufacturers told us you know, that it, it might be possible to modify this so we can use it with both closed loops and drain down systems but as of yet that's not been done so you know if you buy the system from us with the solar block you have to use the closed loop system if you want to use a drain down system you use some slightly different equipment the controller um, it's basically a differential controller which will allow the pump to be turned on or off an example of one you can use is the uh, resol controllers these can be used in both closed loop and drain back options. The pump system such as this uh, Taco model here, it's, it works for you know, solar systems because it allows the fluid to drain back through the pump when it turns off. You know, some pumps when the fluid turns off it won't allow backflow and you can't use that as a solar system. So make sure you get a suitable pump if you're going to use a drain down system. On smaller solar systems it doesn't really matter whether you use a closed loop or a drain down. But when you start getting into a larger and larger systems, either for a home where you want to do home heating or commercial systems such as like car washes or hotels, then the case for using a drain down system becomes much stronger. The two diagrams here show you, you know, roughly what's going to happen. So in the daytime, the pump goes up, pumps the fluid up the left side, goes through the collector, heats up into the tank. At night time, the pump turns off and all the fluid drains out of the collector and out of the pipes back into the tank. That way you can leave the system out in cold climates, it's not going to freeze at night and it's also not going to overheat in the daytime. So this is really the main advantage of a drain back system is you don't need to build any sort of heat dump in. The heat dumps for small solar systems are not too difficult to put in as we described in the previous solar block video but when you get into large commercial systems or in a house where you have you know four five six ten collectors twenty collectors in in large commercial systems then designing a system to dump that heat when the overheating occurs can get very expensive so obviously you can remove all the equipment needed to do the heat dump also the pressurized system you don't need the expansion tanks you know the system becomes much cheaper to install so these diagrams show the drain back system again. So in this system here, the tank contains just water. There's no glycol. The tank simply acting as, for a, as a store of heat, like a battery in an electric system. You're not going to use the water in this tank. It's just going to stay a static tank. So obviously you need a lid on it, which is sealed to try and stop or help prevent evaporation from the system. Obviously when you design a drain back system, there's, there's more planning needs to go into putting the system in because you have to have the pipes so that there are no slope, uh, no U-bends in it, no, uh, no kinks that can cause water to get trapped into the system. With a closed loop system it doesn't matter you know, where you run the pipe and the controller can, could be above or below the collectors, it doesn't really matter. Whereas in drain down system everything drains by gravity so you need to make sure the pipes are going to drain properly. The pipes need to be big enough not to get air locked. In a closed loop system you might get away with running half inch pipe because you're, you know, you're using force to pump the fluid around whereas in the drain down if the pipe's too small you can get an airlock and the pipe can freeze and burst your pipe so you know, depending on the size of the system even a smaller system for drain down I'd recommend using a three quarter inch pipe. In this diagram it's also shown the collector's slope to about 10 degrees inclination on the roof so this is 
the header is tilted 10 degrees so this allows the fluid to drain out of the header back into the pipes when the pump turns off. There are reports you can find of different companies and people using collectors that aren't sloped and they seem to work, still seem to work in cold climates. However, if you can, tilt the collector 10 degrees to allow the water to drain. The photographs here are from a company called Trendsetter Industries. If you, if you Google their name, you'll find the company. Um, they make large solar sat tanks for solar hot water systems. These tanks can be used for both closed loop and drain down systems, but they were primar primarily used for a drain down system. You can see the size of the tanks and in the lower right corner here you can see the multiple heat exchanger coil suspended onto the tank. So you can get the tank designed with one or a dozen you know, heat exchanger coils. Some of them are used for putting heat into the tank which might be on the solar loop. If you use a closed loop system you'll have a heat exchanger in there. Or you can use it for different zones in the house. So if you've got like five different uh, heating zones on an in-floor heating system, you can run each one through a different heat exchanger to heat to different amounts. Now this layout we're going to show over the next few slides shows large pressurized tanks and just shows you the, the sort of layout that you can use for different systems. See the pump in the lower corner here in, in this system, uh, which is what the Trendsetter Industries use they have like a u-tube going over the side of the tank so you can fill this with fluid and the pump stays primed all the time you can just drill a hole through the side of the tank and have the pump directly attached to it but obviously if you put you know holes in tanks then they could leak at some point so this u-tube or this trombone over the top of the tank allows you to keep the pump primed without having any holes in the tank In a drain back system the collectors have to be above the tank and the pump because gravity is being used to drain everything out. And the pump's going to have to stay primed with water like we just described. So just to review again what happens, the controller will have a look at the temperature of the collectors. If the temperature of the collectors is hotter than the tank then it says okay we can start pumping. It turns the pump on and pumps the fluid through the collectors into the tank. So the tank heats up. In the overheat scenario, the solar controller looks at the temperature of the collectors and the temperature of the tank and if it decides the temperature of the tank is already at the maximum temperature you've set for it then it won't turn the pump on. The collectors are quite happy sitting on the roof in the sun, they just they just get hot but there's no fluid in it so it doesn't really make any difference to them so it's, it's just fine. It's just like leaving a car out in the sun, you know, the roof's going to get hot but it doesn't really matter. So this is how it works, so the fluid goes up through the collectors, comes out, comes out hot down into the tank and this keeps occurring until the tank heats up. So obviously the tank gets to whatever temperature you know, the sun can get it to or whatever the maximum temperature is. And then your cold water supply comes in through the main, normal main supply, goes through the heat exchanges in the tank, comes out of the tank and then goes into your existing system. In this case, you know, we've got a small, you could have a small, you know, 40, 50, 60 or 80 gallon tank in the building, which is not your normal water tank. So in this case, tanks, whatever the maximum temperature it gets to, pump turns off. And then the fluid drains out of the lines back into the tank. Even if the system is not heating anymore through the collectors because the tank's at its maximum temperature, the cold water supply is still going to get preheated by running through the tank. This can carry on happening until the tank eventually will be cooled down and it will lose all its, you know, the heat stored in the tank. When this happens, the controller, you know, will have a temperature differential in there, which will say, okay, if the tank drops 10 degrees, then I'll now start the pump back up again and we'll start heating the tank again. 
So that way the temperature of the water in the tank is always going to be as hot as possible during the day. The controller just turns the pump on or off as many times as it needs to during the day to keep the tank heated. So with the drain back controller, the controller will be programmed by yourself when you set the system up to start reheating the tank whenever the tank temperature drops by a certain amount. You can change whatever this value is. Most people say 10 degrees and then the pump will start up again. This way it's going to keep the tank as hot as possible and it also helps if you go away on holiday, if it's a residential system, then the tank's never going to overheat. It will just stay hot and then when you come back from holiday, things go back to normal. So in commercial buildings, this system can be expanded or tied into the existing system quite easily. In this system here, there's just like a, a, a main a heat ring where you can draw off hot water from the system as needed. So with these sort of systems and these sort of tanks, you can put as many collectors as you need onto a building. The rule of thumb is use approximately 80 gallons per 30 tube of collector. So with 100, 100 collectors, you might have you know 8,000 gallons of storage. You might not need quite that much, but you know it's it's a good rule of thumb. In the in the previous system we've been describing, I'll just go back to it a minute. You can see in this area here, there's no heat exchanger where the fluid is coming out of the collector. It's simply just water circulating around the system and it drains back into the tank here. These systems will still work in cold climates because when the sun's shining, the water's flowing through the collectors. Even if it's 20 or 30 degrees below, the water's going to be hot and won't freeze. So the idea is, is when the sun goes down and then the collectors drain, you've got several minutes before the water will cool down enough to, to the temperature it's going to freeze at. And these do work fine in cold climates so long as you take care and put the system in where the fluid will drain nice and smoothly, you know, have a decent slope on the pipes and don't have any kinks or right angle bends or taps that will block the fluid draining out the system. However, you can modify the system. I'll just go back to the other slide into a modified drain down system. So if you're a little bit nervous about the system freezing, you can change it slightly as you're shown in this drawing here. So this is showing the system, you know, the pipes in the gray on this side here are the heating loop basically. You can change that loop from an open loop to have a closed loop with a heat exchanger. The water goes around the loop until the controller decides to turn the pump off and then it drains down into this smaller drain down tank here which is inside the building. So this way you've got glycol in the loop so you know if there are some sort of problems with the system then it's still not going to freeze but you do get the benefits of not having the system overheating. There are some slight disadvantages to this that with glycol in the system, the heat exchange capacity of the system is not as high. You know, you get the most heat transfer with plain water. As you put more and more glycol in, you get a less efficient heat transfer, but you have to trade that off with, you know, the risk of the system freezing. So I'm not going to run through all this here. This is basically a summary of what we've just talked about. So if you want to read it, just pause the video and have a look through this section here. So here's a summary of the drain back versus closed loop. The both systems work well. Um, the closed loops have more equipment to install and will take a little bit more technical knowledge to install the system. And they also have a little bit more maintenance. You know, you've got to check the glycol more often. Pressure relief valves need to be checked every now and again. The expansion tanks need to be sized correctly, whereas none of that happens with the drain down or the drain back system. And as we said earlier, it, the drain back can be used in either scenario, but its prime advantage is when you get to large commercial solar systems or a house system where you're wanting to do space heating.